lot of people aren't used to this, but I'm actually going to get in front of the camera this time and talk about something that a lot of people on the YouTube community has tried to go over and explain and do an okay job, you know, get, you get the gist of it, and uh, what I'm going for is e-prompts. Now, if you're big in arcades and video games, you know, reproductions and stuff alike, you deal very massively with e-prompts, and it can be quite a scary subject at sometimes, you know, what they are, what they do, how to write to them, how to read from them, etc., etc. And there's a, there's a lot of good tutorials out there. Luke Morse has a tutorial. I believe uh, Black Dog 7 has a tutorial, and they're, and they're good, they really are, but I feel that they, they leave out bits and pieces that kind of you got to go search for afterwards and kind of, you know, find out by yourself. So, today I'm going to show you how to write to uh, one of these little e-proms on a little device actually come out of Canada, it's called the GQ4X. It's an awesome EEPROM program, I, in my opinion. I bought it for $100, I think it was, on eBay, $110, about. And yeah, I mean, they ship right out of Canada. It hooks up through USB. Um, there's a little power adapter itself to power this when, they're, when you need to write on two bigger EEPROMs, but that's another discussion upon itself. But, highly recommend this one. Again, GQ4X. Uh, works great. Everything I've, I've uh, wrote to it turns out great. I think I only had one problem, but I think it had to do with the EEPROM, so that that's really, you know, either way. But yeah, GQ4X, look it up on eBay. Uh, the, uh, the manufacturer on the back, uh, MCU Mall, they uh, sell that. And I would recommend buying this, and then if you are planning on getting pretty heavy into this stuff, this adapter here, the ADP054, that's a uh, 16 megabit uh, EEPROM adapter, and that's for writing some of the larger ROMs, the uh, 42 pin ROMs, and this, I think itself, was another $40. So, and before I forget, one other thing is to get an EEPROM eraser. Now, the newer ROMs today, the EEPROMs, EEPROM, are electronically erasable as towards the EEPROMs, E-P-R-O-M, which are not. You have to use one of these, and this has a UV light in it. And I bought this one off eBay. It says it would only work for 220 volts, but don't get scared. I plugged it in. It works fine. I've been using it for a good couple months now. So this works just great. Um, I'll explain how to work this thing, too. It's not hard. Everything is very, you know user friendly so let's get to before it. Before writing to your EEPROM you want to know a little information about it. The top number indicates on what model EEPROM you actually have. In this case it's an M27C800 which is a 8 megabit 1 megabyte chip. The number below that indicates the read write speed of your EEPROM. In this case it's 100 nanoseconds. Usually when dealing with arcade boards and video games, you want to try and hit for a faster read and write speed. But there are some exclusions. There are some boards that require slower EEPROMs. Check your manual and whatnot. Below that, you'll see the number of when it was produced. And below that, you will see the manufacturer and where it was produced. In this case, it's ST. Then if you haven't already done so, I would go to mcumall.com, go to their downloads, and get the USB programmer package. Get the newest one, and do not install the one from the CD, or you will have problems. Get the, get the newest uh, software for your program and, programmer, and get the uh, driver right here. Just download those two, and install them, I would say, before you even plug the thing in. So after you get your G... Q4X in the mail, you get your drivers loaded from the MCU Mall website and the software loaded. You got your EEPROMs too. You can go ahead, just use the USB cable provided, plug into one of your USB ports. I use 3.0 because it provides a little more juice. It's not a big deal because there there is, like I've said previously, that extra AC adapter that you will need no matter what 3.0, 2.0 you have it in to provide the juice it needs to burn some of the larger chips. But go ahead and get that plugged in like that. Go ahead and load up the application. 
I have mine on rocket dock so it might look a little weird. And it's going to go ahead and just say remove any chips that are in this ZIF socket so make sure there's nothing in there. So now we're going to want to find our EEPROM that we had from earlier. It's an M27C800. You want to go in the device list, look it up in device list obviously. And you're going to look up M27C800 or whichever EEPROM you have. And there it is right there and you can just go ahead and select it. But now say you look up a chip and it doesn't have the exact model. Well, you can go to the all generic and get rid of this here. And you can basically search this list or even easier, you can just hit, besides the M, you can just hit 27, say C800 and there it is as a generic and you can go ahead and select that. But since they actually have the actual chip, we're just going to go ahead and use that and go C800. I can spell right. And there it is. And then you can go ahead and select that. And now you kind of want to observe all the little uh, warnings and, well, not exactly warnings, just kind of signs that they're giving you. It says in this right here, device location, it says adapter is needed. And down here it tells you the exact adapter you need. And right there, ADP054. So that 16 megabit adapter I talked in the beginning, this one, we're going to go ahead and have to use that because this is a 16-bit EEPROM and the, uh, there's too many uh, pins for just this regular ZIF socket so on your EEPROM cord. So you're going to go ahead and you want to line up the bottom two pins on this on the bottom two pins on EEPROM cord and you're just going to go ahead and stick it in like that and then you're going to want to lock it down. That way you should have uh, four pins that aren't in right there. And then you're going to go ahead and look at your adapter and here it's got a little sign that says 27C800 and right here it's telling you to use this socket. So you're going to go ahead and put your chip into there. And then again you want to make sure to look at the notch because there is a notch on these EEPROMs, there's a notch at the top. That is the top of your chip and you want to line that up towards the top of this socket. And you want to put this chip, make sure that, again that the bottom two pins are in the last two spots of the socket. And make sure it's locked down like that. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is you want to hit blank check. This is just checking if the device is blank and oh, it's not. So now we're going to go ahead and so now we're going to go ahead and take our little EEPROM eraser. We're going to take our chip, put it just in a little cart, make sure it's on, and then we'll say we'll set this one for about mm, probably about let's see we'll do for about 30 minutes. You don't want to cook them too long, but you do want to keep them in there for quite a bit, especially if you have multiples, that way that the light can fully erase it and you get a good old erased EEPROM. And there you can see that it's on. So now we're going to go ahead, wait 30 minutes, and then go ahead and try it again. Okay, so now we're going to take our chip after it's set in that EEPROM eraser for a good 30 minutes or so. We're going to go ahead and put it back in the socket, like I explained earlier, just make sure those last two legs are in the last two sockets and that the notch is at towards the top of the chip. And then we're going to go ahead and hit blank check. Go ahead and check if it's fully erased yet again. And there you go, we've successfully erased the chip. Now we're going to want to write our data to it. So you're going to want to find your file, whichever file you're going to use to write to it. And in this case I'm going to use uh, Snow Bros for the Sega Genesis. I'm going to take the uh, ROM file and it's going to ask down here what type of file do you want to write to it. I just do all files so you can find it. And then go ahead and click on whichever file you're going to use and then it's going to pop up with this screen right here. It's going to ask for read mode, file mode, file offset. I usually don't pay much attention to these because most of the ROMs I use don't use them. 
and you want to make sure you do it as a bin. There are there is a one that's dot rom, and I have confused that before. And what will happen is your EEPROMs will end up not burning successfully. So most of the time, I won't say all the time, but most of the time, I would say 95% of the time of EEPROM burning, use the dot bin, and then just go ahead and press OK, and that's loaded in into the EEPROM burner. And then you're just going to go ahead and hit right. And since this is a um, one megabyte chip, it actually might take a couple bits, so we will come back when it's totally done writing. Alright, just get past the trouble to, to write it. It took 194 seconds, so about three minutes or so. Now, it, it, below here you'll see that it says device write completed, OK, ID check, skip, verifying code, devices verified. And verifying means it's just in, it's ensuring the integrity of the chip. But what I like to do is I like to verify it another, maybe one or two times, just to make sure that the chip is doing all right. So verify it once. And the device is verified again. Verify it another time. And there you go. You should have a good burn chip. Now, another thing you can do is since this has code on it now, we can go ahead and read it and actually save it to the computer. So you can go ahead and check from here. You can read it. And now it's going to go ahead and read the chip. This takes quite a bit quicker, or this is quite a bit quicker than writing to it. And there you go. Now it's saved into the EEPROM. Then you can just go up here and do File, Save As, Save It to Your Desktop or so, and we'll just call it uh, Snow Bros. And there you go, right on your desktop you have that. And that's literally the uh, file the EEPROM that you just saw. If that's the way you want to read chips, you can do that as well. But another thing, just to kind of sum up, is another thing I like to do, is since these are windowed EEPROMs, is you can get these color coding labels. I just got them from Walmart, these tiny, tiny ones. And then you can just go ahead and be, uh, be crafty about it. Craft like your mom does. Take the EEPROM, just put the little label right over the window. That way, you know, when you're holding it under light, like these uh, fluorescent bulbs and stuff, they emit a little bit of UV light. That way that they will never get erased again. And there you go. You got a fully written chip. All right, and then to go ahead and just sum things, everything up. That's basically how you write to an EEPROM. And I include a little bit of uh, reading from it, too. It's a lot more, it's a lot easier to read once you know how to write. So vice versa either way. So yeah, there's a the little GQ4X for you. I mean, the basic principles applies to many other programmers out there. I find just this one has the most, you know, well, you know, for beginners. It's the easiest thing for beginners how to rewrite uh, EEPROM to. So yeah, I mean, there you go. There's the uh, Snow Bros EEPROM we have written right there. I mean, like I said, you can do Plenty of other EEPROMs, they don't require that adapter. You just plug it straight into that uh, zip socket right here. The adapter is just for what it is, 16-bit EEPROMs. So um, that's my video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.